Hi guys, today I have with me problem 3.59 from Young and Friedman's University Physics textbook. I think this is from the 15th edition and then in the, sorry, in the, from the 14th edition and then in the 15th, it's 3.61. Anyways, this problem is called Look Out. A snowball rolls off a barn roof that slopes downward at an angle of 40 degrees. The edge of the roof is 14 meters above the ground, and the snowball has a speed of 7.00 meters per second as it rolls off the roof. Ignore air resistance. A. How far from the edge of the barn does the snowball strike the ground if it doesn't strike anything, anything else while falling? C. A man... 1.9 meters tall is standing 4.0 meters from the edge of the barn. Will the snowball hit him? Um, this problem actually has a part B. I just took it out because I find it a little bit um, like restricting to explain, um, I guess, like graphing questions, you know, um, like right here in this small space and plus like in one video because I think it'll just take a little bit more time to understand and to draw everything out, but that actually could be a video of its own one day. Um, it's actually super easy. It's just, it requires some space and just some time. So I'm just gonna do part A and C from this, but you know, if you want part B, maybe leave that in the comments or send me an email and I could do an entire video about those types of questions. Okay, so let's do what we usually do. We actually have a diagram already drawn for us. And I think I think the reason why they drew the diagram and they also gave it like three um three dots in terms of difficulty. I I do see how the problem is slightly challenging, but I don't actually think it's too challenging. Um, I would have personally given it maybe two, maybe 2.5, but that's besides the point. So this problem is actually not as difficult as advertised, but let's get started and you guys will see what I mean. Okay, so it does look different because usually when we're doing projectile questions, so far in all my videos and mo majority of the time, projectile motion kind of looks a little bit something like this, right? So it looks like this. Sometimes like, let's say you're on some sort of edge, it looks like this um but you know it can also in this situation you, we can start from here and you know it, it makes this whole you know projectile motion and then we can do this and it can look like this arch but remember we can also do this portion of the arch right like just this part and that's what this question is right so if we're already at an angle it's still gonna drop that way that's still a portion of the arch and that's what this question is and that's why I think they gave it three dots in terms of difficulty but it's really not that difficult it's just new and maybe that's why um people aren't used to it and maybe that's why it's a little bit difficult but anyways let's break this problem down into x and y components so we said we said that this is going to be the 40 degree angle right so we said this is going to be 40 degrees and it's going to look something like this, right? So it's going to roll this way. And it's going to kind of look like that, right? And because, because we're doing that, we have an X component and a Y component. And nothing really changes here because our X still doesn't have acceleration, but our Y does. And so we can do X component and Y component. So we know that for x, it's just going to be vix it's going, is equal to vx is equal to, let's figure that out in a second. We're going to have time. And then we're also going to have like the horizontal distance, right? The distance in x. So for vix, right, we just need this portion. And what's this portion going to be? Well, if we kind of draw out like some, we do some, you know, math footwork or ang you know tr trig footwork um we can see that this is 40 degrees which means this is also 40 degrees which means that um you know if it's going if it's falling off this way it's going to be um the x component is just going to be this 40 degree it's going to be cos right so cos 40 so it's going to be this is vi 
if this is bi and we want this, right? And this is the angle 40. This is just going to be 40 degrees. Sorry, I I did that a different way before, but I realized midway through my explanation that this would be so much easier just to explain just like this. So this is 40 degrees. This is V naught. So V naught 40, right? That's just going to be cos 40. Okay. Um, let me just erase that. So that's going to be seven, seven cos 40. And then the time, we don't know how long it's going to take. It doesn't really give us any indication, but our distance, we also don't know. We, that's what, actually what we're trying to find out in part eight. How far from the edge does the snowball strike the ground? This is going to be X distance and we don't know what it is. So now for Y. So for Y, we know that this is going to be, we're going to have VIY, we're going to want our T, which is the same T as this, right? Because um, as I've said many times in my videos before, something's only going to travel as far in the X direction as long as it is in the air, which is the Y direction, right? So we have D, we, we're going to have height, right? And that's going to be 14 meters. But let's go ahead and just draw like, um, uh, like directions for ourselves, right? We're going to set our coordinate system. So this is going to be plus X, this is going to be plus Y. And as we can see, it's falling downwards. So I'm going to say minus 14 for H, right? It's going to be minus 14. And same for V naught. V naught is pointing downwards. So it's going to be minus seven sine 40, right? Because if this is our angle 40 and we're wanting this portion, it's going to be sine 40, V naught sine 40. Or yeah, V, v naught sine 40, but minus because this is pointing downwards. Time, we don't know. Oh, mistake. Okay, time we don't know. Um, and then what else? We also have our acceleration, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we don't know what our VIF is. Not really sure we're gonna need this, but let's just, what we know and what we don't know. We, we have it all written down right, out in the open. So you can figure out what we do need and what we don't need in a second. Okay, so let's revisit part A. How far from the edge does the how far from the edge of the barn does the snowball strike the ground if it doesn't strike anything else while falling? So VI, um, so if we can see we're looking for this distance, right? But if we're looking for D, which is VIX times T or VX times T, we need T because we don't we have VIX, right? We have that. We don't know what T is. So we got to figure it out from here. And well, if you look, we have three knowns and one unknown. So now all we have to do is figure out what T is and then plug it, figure out this, and then plug that back here. And then we can find out what distance is, right? So let's do that. So VIX times T. Okay, yeah. So we're trying to find out what T is. So if we look at this, what equation are we going to use? I'm going to do this in red. So we can use this equation. Remember this, D is equal to V naught T plus half of A T squared. And then D, which is H, right? That's going to be minus 14 times minus seven sine 40 times T plus half of minus 9.8 times T squared. Now, when I plug this in, actually, I'm going to write this down even nicer, um, just in, you know, ABC format, 4.9 T squared minus 7 sine 40 T plus 14 is equal to zero. So we know that T is going to be, um, is, uh, so we can, I plug this into a quadratic root calculator, but, you know, you can use the quadratic formula, you can use your calculator, you can use, you know, whatever. Um, but I'm that's gonna waste waste time and I already I've already done it before. So let's just let's just um get let me just write down what I got when I found um the two roots. So minus two point two one or one point two nine two 
four seconds. So those are my two roots. But remember that we can't have a negative time, right? That's how are we gonna have that? This is a physical problem. Um, you can't really go backwards in time. Let's have minus time. So 1.2924 has to be our time, right? So 1.2924, 1.2924. And then um, our distance is going to be equal to 1.2924 times 7 cos 40. And when I plug that into my calculator, I am getting 6.9 meters. It's, yeah, 6.9 meters. That's the distance that I'm getting, 6.93 to be exact. Um, I know that the back of the textbook does confirm that the answer is 6.91, but that's just, I was looking at um, uh, some other solutions for this. And if you, if you actually, you know, if you're not precise and you're, uh, you know, precise down to four digits, then you end up getting 6.91, which is exactly their answer, but um, it's not a huge difference. It's not a huge problem. So um, I always find that it's a good idea to carry more digits so that you don't end up making some sort of like rounding error. But um, this this is this should be you know within within reason. Okay, so we have six point nine three. That's our answer for part A. Now for part B or part C, a man one point nine three one point nine meters tall is standing 4.0 meters from the edge of the barn how will the snowball hit him so that's what we have to figure out will the snowball hit him so let me just erase this okay Okay, so will the snow hit him? Um, well, okay, if we find out, we wanna find out what the height is, right? So we wanna find out where this snowball is going to be at four meters, right? So depending on where it is on this, you know, vertically in this Y direction line, right? So if we find out what the height is um, at four meters, then we can figure out if it hits him or not. Because if it's less than his height, that means yes, it definitely hit him. But if it's like much greater than his height, right? So if he's 1.9 meters tall, but then at four meters where he's standing, the snowball is let's say um, eight meters tall or something, right? That is That means it's not gonna hit him. So let's figure that out. What is H? So to get H, we need V naught T plus half of a T squared, right? So we can plug in our V naught, which we have. We, can, we can't plug in T because we don't know what T is at four meters, right? So we said that this 1.2924 seconds is going to take, that's how long it's going to be um, in the air, like all together until it hits the ground, which is 14 meters. But we don't know how we, we want to figure out what this height is, right? Um, so we don't know what time is. So let's figure out what time is. So we can actually figure it out from here. We know what VIX is and we know the distance is four meters. So we just have to isolate for T. So let's do that. So we know that it's going to be T is equal to, um, I always, distance is equal to speed times time. So time, is going to be equal to distance over speed, which is going to be four meters, right? Over seven cos 40 meters per second. And when I do that, I get 0 0.745947 seconds. And I like to carry lots of digits. And when we do that, I can plug, I can plug this time into this equation right here. So let's do that. I'm just gonna bring out a new color. Let's do black, because I have it in black this time. So now for H, we have minus seven sine 40, 0 0.745947 plus half of a minus 
0.745947 t squared, or squared, um, that is t squared. And when I plug that in, I get minus 6.0829 meters, right? So why minus? Because remember, this is our zero point, and this is minus 14, so minus 6.0829. If we add 14 to this, we'll know we'll know how how much it is above the ground, right? And when I do that, I get 7.917 meters above ground. Right? So when I so I'm getting uh, approximately eight meters, right? Um above the ground. Coincidentally, I said eight meters before, but um I didn't plan that out actually. Um Probably just because memory, I probably remembered the answer, but um, that wasn't intentional. Okay, 7.917 meters, but he's only 1.9 meters tall, which means it's not going to hit him. So that's your answer. No, the snowball will not be hitting him. No, so that's our answer. So there we have it. That's our solution for problem 3.8. Five, nine, look out if this was helpful and I hope it was um please don't forget to like and subscribe this video and um you know if you engage with this video I'll know you like it and I can probably do more problems like this um as usual if you have any questions or suggestions please feel free to leave them in a comment or send me an email um thank you so much for watching and see you next time